So to use Apple Classroom, I'm going to open up the Classroom app. Now, because we use what are called managed um, Apple IDs, these classes are set up automatically for us. So anything that's in PowerSchool is going to automatically get imported every night into our um, Apple ID. So if you have a student that gets added uh, today, and today is the student's first day, um, it'll be 24 hours or overnight before that student will show up in your Apple Classroom. Um, but your classes should automatically be generated and your class list should automatically be generated. No codes or anything like that. So if I tap on a class, it's going to start off by showing me all the students that are in that class. Now they should show up um, as an icon that's not grayed out and it shouldn't say offline as long as they are again updated, have Bluetooth turned on, and their device is open and awake. Um, if their device is closed or um, if they are out of range, then they could show up as offline. So if you have a student who's absent, they may show up offline, for example. Uh, and the range is about 150 feet. It's Bluetooth. So it's whatever Bluetooth allows you to do, which is around 150 feet um, from your device. Now, when you open Apple Classroom, on the left-hand sidebar, you're going to see um, all the students in your class. And then you may also see... Um, some students organized by app. So for example, if Penny the Pirate opens up the Safari app, it'll show me all the students who have Safari open um, and so on in here. And this sidebar can be turned off and on by simply tapping this button in the upper left-hand corner to be able to see more on your screen at one time. Now, it may also put groups together based on things like how much battery life a student has. So it might put all the students whose battery is about to die in one group. Um, or I can hit the new group button and actually make my own groups if I want. So maybe if I have a certain group of students I want to keep an eye on or a certain group of students that um, I need more uh, control over to maybe monitor, uh, for whatever reason, that's how I can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my sidebar off just so I have a bigger screen. Now, I can control an entire class or I can control an individual device. So right now I'm looking at my entire class at once. Again, I only have one student, but I can see Penny the Pirate is using Safari because there is a Safari icon there in the corner. At the top, there's a toolbar that gives me a bunch of different options on what I can do with that device. Now, one of the most commonly used things is viewing screens. It's always helpful to be able to see what students are working on. Um, and so if I simply tap on the four circles at the top, this is gonna show me all of the screens of all the students in my class at one time. Now, obviously it's a tiny view, um, but if I needed to, I could go ahead and tap on any individual student in view screen to be able to see exactly what it is that student's working on. A few other options I have in the upper right-hand corner, um, there is an eyeball with a slash on it. This will actually hide whatever app they're working on. So. Um, Penny had Safari open. When I tap hide, it will hide whatever they're doing. This is simply a way just to get students' attention. They can still go ahead and tap on the app again to open it back up whenever you're ready for them. But it's a way to just grab their attention um, to, towards you whenever you're ready. There's also a lock button. When I hit the lock button, this will lock their device. The student's going to get a message that shows up. It tells them their device has been locked. And then whenever I am finished uh, with their devices or finished with my directions, then I can go ahead and tap that unlock button to go ahead and unlock their device and get it back to them. Now I also have a mute button, which will simply mute um, all the iPads. So again, if they're doing something with sound, it might be hard to gather their attention. Um, this will mute their devices uh, to allow you to direct it towards you. In any of these whole class commands will be run to the entire class unless I hit the select button up here at the top and then I could select just certain students. So if I only wanted to see uh, certain students or lock certain students devices or things like that I could do that by simply hitting the select button and then choosing what command I want to use. Now in the upper left hand corner I have the ability to launch apps. So this little stack of paper here gives me the ability to launch an app on a device. So if I tap the Canvas app, for example, this will launch Canvas on all of those student devices. And I can even choose to open it on this iPad if I want. So maybe if I'm demonstrating something, I can open it up. 
And if I tap on that again, there is also the ability at the bottom, I have to turn this on first, but I can go ahead and lock them in an app after opening it. Now this app list is all of the apps you have on your iPad. So if I am going to lock a student into an app, I have to make sure I have that app on my device as well. But let's say we're gonna do Canva and I wanted to lock them in that app. I turn that on first and then tap the Canva button. This will launch that app on their device and it locks them into that app so that they can't hit the home button or do anything to get out of it. Now, whenever I'm finished uh, with them, I can just simply hit the unlock button again and that will unlock their device, which allows them to close or quit that app or get back out of it uh, and use other apps at the same time. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of here is that some apps require the use of other apps. So for example, the Canvas app might also have, maybe you're giving a Google Docs assignment or um, they need Safari to be able to open up a link uh, to another website. And the Apple Classroom only lets you lock them into one app. You can't lock them into multiple apps. So um, doesn't always work the way you need it to, depending on what it is you need to do. But something like Mosul Manager can set up a list of study apps that you could lock them into if you need. Now, there is also a little compass icon up here at the top. This is for Safari. And this allows you to open up um, a website. And so I can do it either through books, or I could launch something from my uh, the books app if I have some PDFs or something stored in there, or I can go ahead and launch an app uh, or website in Safari. Now, right now, it's gonna look at um, only specific um, things that I have bookmarked. So I have to have something that's been favorited or it's in my bookmark list, um, which may or may not be convenient, especially if I'm looking to just share a quick website that I'm using for class. So another way I can do this, which I actually prefer, is once I've started my class, so my class is open here, I'm gonna tap my home button, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to Safari. So I have a website open that I wanna to share to the class. I'm gonna go ahead and just simply tap the share arrow in Safari, and tap AirDrop, and then this will show me um, the class that I currently have open. So I have a class now called Team Time, this team time class is the class I'm currently in. I've already started that class in Apple Classroom, but even though I'm not in Classroom right now actively, I'm in Safari, I can airdrop it just by simply tapping on that class and it will launch, uh, airdrops that file to every student in that class and it launches that website for them. So I don't have to have things saved or bookmarked to be able to do that. And that will also even work with things like uh, PDFs, maybe things from the Files app. So if I have the Files app installed on my device, and maybe I have a PDF or something in here that I wanted to share with the class, I can do that as well. Again, if it shows up in the share arrow and uh, I have the ability to airdrop it, then I can send it to other people uh, the same way. Now, everything I've shown you so far in Apple Classroom has to do with taking um, an entire class at one time. But I can also tap on a student and get all of those same options with just one student at a time. So if I wanted to see one student's screen, I could go ahead and view just that one student's screen. I could go ahead and launch an app for that one student for them if I wanted to. I could choose to lock them into that app if I need to. And then I can hide, lock, mute, and so on. The only difference here from what I get to the entire class is I also have the ability to airplay, where I can choose to airplay one um, student screen onto an Apple TV. So I could send one student's device uh, to the television to be able to show off what it is they're doing. There is an option here for password. Um, we don't use that in uh, the way we have things set up, so you don't have to worry about that. We automatically set student passwords for you. Now, when I'm done with the class, all I have to do is tap these three dots and tell it to end that class. Now, it's kind of confusing. Sometimes you forget to end that class, but you want to try to get in the habit of ending the class when you're done because that will release student devices from any command that you had. So if you had them locked in an app or if you had them um, muted or, or locked uh, in general, whenever you end the class, it'll release them from all of those commands. You also get a nice little summary report here um, of how this class went. 
And what this does is this will actually show you all of the apps that your entire class used. And if I tap on an app, like uh, the Canvas app here, it'll show me a list of all the students who were in that app. And anywhere you see that's blue, that will show you when they were in or how much time they spent in that app. So this entire line represents the entire time that my class was open before I hit end. And that blue dot shows the amount of time that they spent within that time period in that app. I can also tap on a person and I'll be able to see uh, from each individual person what apps they were using so I can make sure they were on task and how much time they spent in each tap again using those blue lines. If I needed to, I could screenshot this uh, and use it for some data to know that students are on task or not. And then when I'm finished, I'm gonna go ahead and tap done.